Hey everybody, don't make the mistake of believing all that you see on social media. You see, a lot of what's presented is only the best side of someone else's life. And if there's a voice that you really need to listen to in 2023, it's Ty Herndon. Now, I use that phrase voice on purpose because Ty has a very successful country music career. He's got a voice that's recognized all over the world. But in this episode of Unbeatable, Ty uses his voice to explain some of the hardships, some of the really dark moments of his life, even the darkest moment where he had to choose between God or a gun. You get a chance to hear Ty Herndon get real authentic and vulnerable on this episode of Unbeatable. These stories of triumph over adversity will help you handle your toughest days in life and become unbeatable. Hey Ty, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be part of this episode of Unbeatable with me. Absolutely, man. It's my honor, man. I know we've hey, been trying man, to- I have <laughs> listened. Yeah, I was going to say, man, I am a fan. I don't always get a chance to interview people that I've listened to them on the radio. And man, it's a, it's a great honor to be able to have you on the, this episode. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for knowing my music. Cool. <laughs> Um, for those listeners out there, and by the way, we got people tuned in from around the world. So some of them are familiar with your music. A lot of them have never heard about you. Don't even know about the genre of music that you make. Um, let's talk a little bit about childhood and how you got interested in making music, especially country music. So tell us, how did this start for you? I am probably the least talented in my family, to be honest with you. Uh oh, you know, come I, on, I have- man. I'm being, I'm not even being humble. I, I'm telling you, there there are some singers in my family. My grandmother wow. had her own radio show on WPRN in South Alabama from the time I could remember. So I was standing on, you know, crates or whatever when I was five years old singing on her radio show. And um, I just, you know, remember my mom and her sisters had a singing group and just, uh, I, you know, my, my greatest memories are just them doing dishes, the three of them standing there, uh, you know, wow. singing and think and just and just crazy my, my, you know, my grandmother she went to heaven with her uh, at 99 years old with her gibson guitar in her hand so come on you know <laughs> okay all right i don't know that i had much of choice but to sing I, th- I think i just was given the opportunity um from a lot of great hearts to actually go yeah. for it and have an yeah. opportunity to, uh, i started out in bluegrass and gospel music and really um it was a it was an interesting transition um moving from that into uh progressive country but yeah. I, 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 I sang professionally. If people ask me what my first job was, I said, I'm still doing it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I've been doing this Haven't got life. fired from it yet. Right, man. I, I think in high school, I had one job at Burger King and it didn't last long. I think I, I, think I, got, I think I got fired from that, but, um, I had a job at Burger King too. Didn't get fired, but I mean, I know what it was like in high school. Yeah. I don't think that I don't think they thought I was supposed to be singing to customers on the microphones to take their orders. So <laughs> you were singing at the drive through. I love it. People were lined up just to listen to this guy's voice. <laughs> it was actually, actually a true story. Anyhow, um, I, uh, I, I moved to Nashville because my high school choir director, because I was really kind of a very shy, um, laid back, real nerdy kid. And I still am awkward and nerdy. I'll tell you that right now. But All right. I, uh, I uh, I joined the high school choir and uh, um, and I was singing all these licks, you know, because we do that yeah. in gospel music. And high school choir director said, stop singing the licks. You need to learn the notes and right. to read the scales before you do, do that. And I was like, what's the scale? And so, <laughs> Grandma Tommy, never told me anything about a scale, right? No, I thought that was something you weighed on. So anyhow, that was interesting. My uh, Tommy Black was his name and he gave uh-huh. me my first solo secular solo singing a Barry Manilow song uh, right. looks like we made it which was the song yeah and uh I became kind of out of my shell at that point I I, I kind of got rid of the acne and got a cool haircut and uh, mom bought me a cool t-shirt and all of a sudden I was I was a, a I was cool a cool kid guy. yeah I could have cared less honestly but it was kind of fun and I got a job at working at a theme park in Tennessee when I was in senior in high school and um, got really introduced to the crazy world of music. And my family was, they were very supportive actually. Yeah. So country music was really the direction I wanted to go. Cause man, man, I, I, for some of the grand old Opry here in Nashville, oh, Tennessee, yeah. 
17 years old. Yeah. And it was just incredible. The legendary Roy Acuff um, yeah. uh, uh-huh. came around and saw the show I was in. I said, I would love for you to come and be my guest on the Grand Ole Opry. And I literally almost passed out because I was like, this is the show. Started hyperventilating. Yeah. This is the show that I listened to on an AM radio. Uh-huh. We had FM, we had television. We had, I mean, you know, we had all of that. But my grandmother and grandfather always wanted to listen to it on the AM radio, the Grand Ole yeah. Opry. It was just yeah. what you did. And so right. we, um, these are some of my musical heroes early on that weren't in gospel music, gospel and bluegrass. So yeah. meeting the great Bill Monroe was like meeting the president for me. Um, I'm on sure. the Grand Ole Opry. It was incredible. And that night, my grandmother was with me. Um, it was oh, her. for real? She went to the Opry with you? She went to the Opry. She traveled. So wow. that's the they traveled, and uh, Roy Aka brought her on the stage and introduced her. And it was her birthday. Oh, that... The whole Opry sang happy birthday. Wait a second. Birthday. It was your grandmother's? <laughs> you were on the stage of the Grand Old Opry on your grandmother's birthday? I was, yes. That, and... This story is incredible. So... I learned on that day it was very little about me anymore. It was all about my grandmother. <laughs> yeah, sure. She stole the show, right? She stole the show, and she came back many times. But I was, um, I've, I've been on the Opry many times since then. Yeah. It's just, it's still the mother church and what we love yeah, here in national right. country. It's the ultimate. And- yeah, and for people that don't, uh, that didn't grow up listening to country music, you got to help them understand just how big of a stage this is, how big of a moment it is to be on the stage at the Grand Old Opry. Can you explain well, it to people that, have, that that aren't familiar with the music? There are two moments. There's the original Ryman Auditorium where yeah. Patsy Cline, uh, right. Hank Williams, um, all of the greats um, would stand out in the alley. If you've seen any of those movies, Loretta Lynn, um, and they would all just hang out in Printer's Alley behind yeah. um, the Opry. And so that's behind that's a mother what, church of country music, right? Yeah. People travel from all over the world to go to the right. Ryman. And so that stage um, was a really cool moment later on, because by the time I got to Nashville, they were doing the Grand Ole Opry in the new Opry house, which uh-huh. was just massive. And I think, right. it, you know, whole 17,000 people. So, um, and that was my first Grand Ole Opry, but they brought a big piece of the floor from the Ryman auditorium. Right. Yeah. To Nash to to the new Opry House. So standing on that round piece of wood where Patsy Cline and, and Loretta and, and all the greats stood is really nerve wracking, to be honest with you. We really? always feel like we stand over to the side and let let that be there because you're really hesitant to step on that that hollow ground. <laughs> and so yeah. you've done it a few times and then you're like it you feel like it gives you energy and uh-huh. it's a welcoming spot. So uh the Grand Ole Opry for even if for Carrie Underwood and Reba McIntyre, yeah. just yeah. you know, some of our new greats is still reverent. It's still yeah. it's still the house that built most of us. So right. <laughs> including me on an AM radio down in a little town in Alabama. Right. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, when you refer to it as the mother church of country music, you know just how reverent, almost how sacred that stage is. Um, and yes. it back, actually way before it became the Ryman Auditorium used to be a church. So there's really, you know, some connection there. Um, but I just, I just figured this out. Um, so you grew up in Alabama, but if I heard you right, you went to to Tennessee while you were still in high school. I did. I was traveling back and forth. Mom and dad were very hesitant. As a matter of fact, they traveled a lot with me. It's only two and a half hours from, um, Cater, Alabama, which is a small, Uh um, to Nashville, but to my mom and dad, it might as well have been a thousand It might as well have been the other side of the earth, right? So they spent a lot of time. Dad rented us a house. My sister, I, actually, education was number one in my family. So of course, I, I went to Belmont University, um, and I had a full music scholarship, Great which was cool. Amazing. Yeah, and um, a lot of those relationships I have today that are that are huge names in the music industry behind yeah. the scenes. I was a music business major, so my dad was like, oh, "You're going to do this, yeah. You're going to do this, and you're going to be smart about everything that goes on with this business." and um, and I kind of teach that today, you know, I've been through, we'll get into some other things there. I've, I've been through some, some rough days as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. With addiction. But I am, I've uh, been very blessed when it comes to acceptance in music and family. Yeah. So yeah. today I'm really open about, you know, Hey, I don't care who you are. If you're LGBTQ, if you're, um, you know, if you're just, you're, you're a farm boy, if you're, uh, uh-huh. you know, the, the kid that just was valedictorian at your school, if you're coming to this town to do music, then you have to treat it like 
It's a Harvard education. Right. You need to know yeah. your you need to know the ins and outs of the business. You need to be a great songwriter. If you're gonna sing, take voice lessons, be the best singer you can be. And when you land here in Nashville, just be very, very proud of the work you've done and yeah. who you are it will fall in place because it will fall in place in your music. And yeah. it, I've seen some of the I've been doing this a long time and you know it's it's cool to hear some of the uh uh, the up and coming folks who are doing good right uh -huh. now say you know, that they heard me say that and um, and they listened. And so, yeah, you know, here this even this far along for me, I'm, you know, I, I'm still doing this. I just just had a, a, a hit record this last year. And it's, one of my friends in the business goes, wait a minute, I thought you were out to pasture. And I said, <laughs> well, you know, man, I nobody told I, you you were out to pasture, right? Yeah, I said. I guess I found a hole in the fence. I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, uh, it's, it's so wonderful to be able to write and, and sing and, and and do the truth, you know. Because yeah. that's another thing I tell these guys as, as I mentor them. You know, authenticity is a beautiful gift, and what you've been through, if you if you're brave enough to put it in music, yeah, that's what people want to hear. You know, there's a lot of fun feel good songs out there. But when it comes down to music, we put on music to hear our own stories that someone's yeah. been through in life. So that's a, that's been a gift. Yeah. I, the advice that you're given right now is not just good advice for musicians. It's for all of us, right? Like it takes some hard work and a lot of hard knocks to get there. I'm putting air quotes around the word there, wherever there is in whatever walk of life or whatever industry you're in, but don't, yeah. don't uh, lose who you are to get there. And there are some people, let's just be honest, Ty, that they think I got to change the way I look and the way I dress. And, and maybe those things might be true. But then there are some people that think I got to change the way I act and the way that I talk. And yeah. they start to change so much, it, trying to grasp the brass ring and trying to make it to the top. They change so much about themselves that there's nothing left yeah. anymore, right? The flat of the and bumblebee. Being, <laughs> yeah, being true to who you are, man, that takes you you use that word. That takes real courage to be true to who you are at all levels, even when you get to the top. It takes courage to be true to who you are while you're working your way to the top too, man. That's yeah. that's not easy, easy to do in any line of work. Hey, man, it's true. You know, we we get so set in our minds that it has to be a certain way. You know, I got really caught up in that. You know, I'm gay and I I I um I, I just came out in 2014 and uh, for years, you know, I I was married twice. I had a record label that asked me to get married. I yeah. I had a kid from Alabama who liked to hunt and fish and work on cars. Just I didn't like the imprint that was given me by God. Mm -hmm. So you know, I I I, just, I wasn't in love with my own blood and bones, and yeah. that crucial in family counseling today. That you know, with with with, with kids that are coming up, they're a little different, no matter what. That that they feel special, loved, and seen, and yeah. not change anything that whether it's god universe family um that that you're so loved and you know i never not felt, i always felt loved by my family but i was i was a kid that just didn't want to be gay i didn't yeah. i didn't i didn't like it i was like i don't want this this is gonna this is messing up my plan for my life you know especially a 10 year old who wanted to be a, a preacher and so yeah. oh really know, yeah, yeah so that's going to be book, a challenge. Yep. <clears throat> my book that's coming, you know, I, I, uh, I was shamed by an evangelist because I was a little bit of a sissy kid growing up and, um, you know, and, and it kind of pointed me out and, and started talking on the sins of, 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 of homosexuality. I didn't know what the yeah. word meant. Like, but if he's pointing at me, I must be one. I asked, you know, and later on I asked my mom and my, my mom was like, you know, explain it to me. And I was like, well, let's just say this. You know, I grew, grew up in tent revivals and I had, uh -huh. you know, aunts and uncles that were just, you know, on fire for God, but don't mess with our kids. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. To say we never saw that, uh, that evangelist again. But, and I tell people that, but in that 15 minutes of tirade, I soaked in something that was with me my entire life. It, right. it made me not want to sing anymore. It made me feel so unworthy of even being alive that God didn't love me. Wait a minute. That's not what I've been told my whole life. Yeah. And, you know, of course, I sing a different song today because I was, you know, um, so present with my spirituality and, and who I am and, and what I'm meant to be on this planet. But um, there was a moment just two years ago that I didn't want to be on this planet anymore. And I almost took my life. And wow. that was I've been sober a long time. But during COVID, you know, we uh, as musicians and singers, I we lost 
gosh, we lost our lives. And yeah. uh, for a guy that had come out and rebuilt his life and, and felt really good about who he was, I didn't want to go back to feeling that way again, feeling like broken and Hey, Ty, let me stop you for just a second. You mentioned that COVID really impacted you because it caused you to disconnect from other people. Man, there's a sponsor for the Unbeatable podcast called Go Ministries, and part of what they do is just help people get connected. In fact, the first thing that they do is connect people one-on-one with each other in in what they call mentoring. And I want the audience to just check out this really short information about Go Ministries. Check this out. Hi, my name is Will Parton. I'm the president of Go Ministries. Go Ministries empowers local leaders to make disciples. Over the past 30 years, I've seen our ministry go from one family, one church, and one school to over 300 local leaders making disciples in 150 different communities through church planting, sports and medical, and we're getting ready to expand into other countries. The way that we define a disciple-making culture is when mentorship, mission, and multiplication are present. When there's that one-on-one mentorship between two people that are sharing the gospel, we believe that discipleship is taking place. And then when a group of people are gathering together and they're on mission together, serving their community that surrounds them, that's another part of discipleship. And then lastly, you can't be a disciple or disciple-maker if multiplication isn't the final goal. So would you please join us in our disciple-making movement and our disciple-making culture by going to gomen.org. You know, when they say that that, that, that Alan Jackson wrote a song about um, about the towers falling, you know, the day Uh the world stopped, second day the world stopped turning. And I always say that, you know, the the third day the world stopped turning was, was COVID and it's, it's a cuss word around our house, especially in the music business, but, <laughs> and it visited me four times. I had it like a total of four times and, Holy um, cow. and vaccinated and, and, you know, all the fun stuff. But, um, I, uh, I had no idea. I actually landed a beautiful place. You know, I wrote a song called God or the gun. Uh-huh. That was out of experience there because, um, I wasn't done here. And I'm just jumping right in this because what I do um, in conversation. But um, I discovered that there were things broken in me that I had no control over. And there was so much trauma and um, that was that was driving addiction and just things I'd never dealt with that I finally started talking about. And, um, you know, every everything just from an abusive arrest to, you know, sexual abuse to, to a lot of things that that a yeah. man, man was to talk about. Yeah. And um and I finally found a voice. As a matter of fact, Dr. Flowers at J Flowers Institute said, Mr. Herndon, he calls me Tyrone. He said, Mr. Tyrone Herndon, he said, you might've walked through the gates of this place. He goes, but there were four gurneys and they were carrying your soul because it was not in your body. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it was good to get that, get, get answers and get that put back yeah. in and, and, um, and just, and just find myself and find out who I really am and yeah. what my purpose was. And to find out, I mean, you know, at 58 years old, to, to live that long and not know I was bipolar or something, you know, and, um, you, you just heard the song, the flight of the bumblebees or the, uh-huh. see the movie, yes. like the lamb, all of that. Right. Woo. In about two weeks, the lambs got silent. The bumblebees kind of like, Oh my God, I can make a complete sentence. Just, wow. inc- just incredible doctors. And, um, so I'm a huge advocate for people to deal with their trauma today yeah. to get to the bottom of what's driving the addiction. And yeah. And, and that, go honestly, back. You're a great guest for this podcast because what you're describing is exactly what we try to do on this podcast. Just tell, show people, um, guys and gals that have been through some pretty significant trauma and when everyone else would have just thrown in the towel, they kept going, they kept getting up. In fact, you're, you're not only helping other people, uh, other musicians, but you're writing about it. You're singing about it. I want to get to the latest single. I want to get to the album, Jacob, in just a second and some of the messages behind it. But I I really want the listeners to get a chance to know you as a person and as a man a little bit more. So the the key, the funny, fun question that I'm asking all of our guests this season is uh, totally hypothetical. But Ty, let's say you get a, a free day, no work, no travel, no, no business, nothing on your agenda. You can go anywhere you want, do whatever you want. Where do you go? What do you do? And the most important part of this question is why there, why, why, why do you do that with your free day? 
well, I have become a, a, a huge meditator, peaceful, you know, just some mornings I'll get out and put my bare feet in the grass just to connect with, you know, God, uh -huh. the planet, build to get energies. But um, there's also, I have a little bit of a wild side too. I, I, I'm a snow skier. So I, I love it. All right. A kid I from Alabama the on the ski slopes. I, I love it. I'm a badass on two skis. I tried to snowboard. It just didn't work out. <laughs> one, so ski, decided, one didn't work out for you, right? Yeah. So, but I decided to, you know, um, uh, to learn anyway. So I got to be a pretty good boarder just so I could, uh, all those kids that run over the back of my skis so I could get revenge. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I would go, you know, man, I would, I love hiking. I love riding horses. And so probably tell you ride or Aspen or something. Oh, Utah. Yeah, man. I would follow the snow and just, uh, I'm a snow bunny and I'm, and I'm also, I love to, to water ski. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm two seasons. Um, but, um, it would be hiking a day okay. of hiking. I probably just put a backpack on and just, um, uh, uh, land somewhere on the water. And yeah, I recently, uh, this year fell in love. So, you know, I'm planning, we're, we're planning quite a few things right now. But All right. I normally would say I would do that alone, but, uh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I'm definitely not alone. <laughs> and All right. I, 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 I would take I would take Alex with me. So it would be sounds good. Sounds great, man. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's you 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 got a song that's out, out right now called Till You Get There. Can you describe a little bit about writing that song and what you were trying to convey in it? Whew. Okay, so I the last six albums for me have been in the pasture, I guess. They've been yeah. <laughs> out in the pasture, right? Found a hole in the fence, kept on going. They've been my organic, you know, uh, just the, the guy that's doing my book right now, David, he's incredible. But he, he said, man, I just, I deep dived your music. You've been telling this story for a long time through your music. Yeah. I said, I have. <laughs> right. Um, but we got a major record deal right in the middle of this album. My manager called and said, hey, you know, we, um, there's a new major label in town that's owned by a med they're, they, they're, they are owned by a mental health organization. And I said, well, that's from God. Perfect for me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I start, we have to, have to talk about the podcast in a minute, but I was hired to do that first, but yeah, really. Um, they, okay. They became a major label and, um, and gave me a job in the next year of, 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 of A and R and, and signing artists that have been around right. for a while that are still relevant and maybe some new folks as well. So we're, it's, it's a new job for me, but I'm loving it. Um, and you're also, basically doing what you learned in college, right? I'm, I'm going to be right. the guy in the big car with the cigar sticking out of my mouth, offering people record deals. Nice. Yeah. So it'd probably be, it'd probably be more like Taffy. <laughs> yeah. All right. I have, uh, I, I'm thinking I, Wayne's world, of course, right now. So of course I got you, I got the reference. I, uh, I didn't know what to, to do because th this came with a radio team and I was like, you mean country radio? I said, it's, it's been 18 years since I, it was my last single at country radio when I was, you know, had seven albums on Sony and yeah. they were like, yeah. I was like, you mean like mainstream country radio? And they were laughing at me so hard. They're like, yes. And I said, okay, well, I, I, I said, I need another month because I needed uh -huh. to go and deep dive on what was going on in country music really. Yeah. And, yeah. and what the production sounded like and, 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 and and finding out things like al algorithms and that have uh -huh. to be there or and it, it just became very educating it was so fun and then I, I said okay now i gotta write it we have to, we don't have a, a radio signals we went actually went back and um got with jimmy throw who's an amazing producer in town and mm -hmm. his wife um uh, uh, and 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 my my i've got two producers and my other producer eric Halbig and we sat down to write a radio single and we sat down right in my living room with the grand grand piano in there. And I started laughing. The spirit of laughter came over me as I was like, <laughs> this is hilarious. This is because, yeah. wow, you know, how, how am I going to compete? And, and Jimmy goes, well, man, I don't guess you'll know that till you get there. And I said, let's write that. <laughs> All right. The story just, and this said, let's write it for everybody who's a dreamer out there who's still got it going on in here. Yeah. Um, and that's what that song was all about. And I have been, I've had a most, the most incredible year last year. And um, this year is, is ramping up to, to do, I mean, they, there's a thing in the program, you know, I don't talk a lot about the program because of anonymity, but there's a thing in the program that, that has, it's called the promises. And I love yeah. to say this to folks who are even like thinking, you know, hey, 
Um, I think the 12 steps ought to be something that kids have to do in high school before they get, before they get out because okay. it really kind of puts it in place. And yeah, um, but there's a thing called the promises that you know in, in sober living and in life um, that that they say it's a country song. Just get your dog and your house and your boat back. Well, actually, it's sober living. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. I just, this, this next year is incredible. And I'm just, I live in a, I live in a huge house of gratitude and yeah. Um, yeah. And then of course there's challenges, you know, but not yeah. like they used to be because I, um, I tell when I work with my sponsors and stuff and I'm, I'm actually a licensed sober companion now. And I always say, Hey man, you got to build your own Disneyland because this is not supposed to be work. Right. It's supposed yeah. to be fun. You get to do more things than you've ever known. And you can, you're tall enough for the rides. I said, you <laughs> you get to live this awesome, magical life, but if if, if you let it be, um, and you have the tools, you have, a, you have the tool belt. It's like putting on that strap to get on a roller coaster. Yeah. You have a, you have a, you have, a, you have a, your, your safety net is there. You're not going to fall out, and 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 just let it become this this magical, happy thing in your life. Because I think I've got a line of T-shirts coming out. It says "Sober" on front, and the back says, "And I'm fun, damn it." <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think <laughs> all right have got a bad rap for for doing the right thing and yeah. um and and for me and my team we're just single-handedly going no you know i've had some mental issues and i yes i'm mental and i'm proud of it and i'm a great person to be around now and just to change that 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 backwards and sideways thinking of people that have done the work and people that need the help because those are the brave people those are people that get out there and, and make the changes Right. And life, they can have life. And so for me, that's magical. And so yeah. I had a, a lady the other day said, yeah, my, my son got sober and his fiance broke up with him because the family thought he was broken. I said, oh, my goodness gracious. I said, give me their phone number. Yeah. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. You got it. She's going to get the best husband that's she's right. ever had. You got this know. all wrong. Yeah. You got this all wrong. So just little things like that, you know, that, that I think are just old, tired thinking, as we say, um, stinking thinking. And yeah. I think, I think, um, we have a lot of good folks out there that are helping people understand that this can be successful because yeah. I almost lost my life to it. And I don't ever plan on doing that again. And I certainly plan on a lot, giving my story to a lot of people that they don't get right. there, that, yeah. never, that, that that's not part of their, you won't know it until you get there. So right. I, uh, I, as you can tell, my mama said the other day, she said, she said, "Well, I guess you kind of become that teacher preacher you uh, you got called to be." I said, I, said Ma, "I never thought about it. But I, guess, I guess I have." Yeah, got a little bit different audience or audience and stage, but yeah, sure. <laughs> Ty, some of the people that are listening have no idea what it looks like to write a song. And as you're talking, I'm thinking you have some choices to make when you're writing a song. And we've already mm -hmm. talked about one of the really big choices, and that's how bold, how authentic. How real do I want to be in this music? So can you talk about you're at the piano, you're, you yeah. just got this idea in your mind of, we, I want to talk, I want to write a song for people that are dreamers, that are grinding it out, and that are not there yet. But describe the choices that you and your producers have to make when you're at that piano deciding how real do we want to be with this song? Because let's just yeah. be honest, it's easy to hide some parts of your life. And maybe people don't want to hear this part of my life. So I'm just going to stuff that away and try to present this nice, clean, antiseptic Facebook okay. uh, life that's not really reality. Or are we going to get real on this song and this album? Can you can you describe what those what those uh, choices were yeah. like at that that piano? So there's I'm sitting at my desk and there's there's drawers here. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the drawer that I stuffed something away that I didn't want to talk about. And I'm going to take really, that. you're going to go to that drawer while you're writing songs and you're going to open that drawer up. Yes, absolutely. Because that's where the meat potatoes are that, that are only going to number one, enable you to tell the truth. And number two, enable a listener to want to hear your truth because you know, we can sit down and write a, you know, a, a, a party feel good song. Sure. You know, that's it. I take my guitar out, sit on the tailgate, a pickup truck with a buddy and write those yeah. all day long. Those are fun. But what people buy albums for, and I think albums, you know, thanks to people like, you know, Harry Styles and, 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 um, you know, in, on the pop end and uh -huh. Ariana Grande and, and, and like my friend Christian Chenoweth, there's bodies of work are coming back because, yeah, um, 
album is almost like a good novel. It tells a story. Right. And that's where you find an artist. So sitting down to write a song, you have to think about those things. Also, song, songwriting is a mood. You I, Like, if I'm not in the mood to write a song, I know I'm not going to get one. It's also a yeah. muscle. So working out that muscle really helps you to get in the mood because I don't sit down and write a lot of songs for other people. I'm, I uh-huh. am a writer when it comes time to writing for myself and tell my stories. Um, but I sit down with some Nashville's most brilliant songwriters who do it every day. And that's yeah. where I got that from. It's a muscle that gets developed. It's a mood that you have to get up and have a cup of coffee. And go, okay. What is my mood today? Yeah. And, um, and I'm writing with this person, um, and really paying attention to what their mood is and finding the middle ground to write a great song because the middle ground is where, where, um, Christy Chen would tell me this one time, this goes for songs. She said, Herndon, she goes, Carnegie Hall. I I, I was going to say, I got to hear you do the voice. You got to do your best to impersonate her because she's got the most distinguished or distinguishable voice on the planet. Now, darling, you listen here. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Now, baby boy, she said, she said, Herndon, you're you're always in the room, man. She goes, but you love that back row. She goes, ain't nothing happening back there. Sit back there when you're on vacation. (laughs) All right. You're you're lucky to be in the room. So, you know, you don't on the front row she said you know that's where keith and nicole are they're comfortable up there she's so cute and they're friends <laughs> she said get your get your booty to the middle get up there she goes that's where that's where the creativity is that's the that's middle where ground. all the action is that's where things happen man she goes yeah i think go sit down when you go to cabo you know but for god's sake get out of the back row so all right <laughs> she told me that when we and the write-up that we had a number one christmas single together on itunes um called orphans of god and so uh-huh. um She's a theme park girl too, but um, words of wisdom her. from Christian Chenoweth. Yeah, man, is she also uh, a, a get you know, your booty her. off the back row? I hope everybody's <laughs> listening to this right now. But and I also call her a musician stealer because all of a sudden one day my guitar player says he's he's uh, going he's to work this, for her, right? He's dating this girl. And I said, well, who is it? He goes, well, I I need uh, his name is Josh. I said, he said I need some extra security because she's coming to show us it. Is it Britney Spears? What's that? <laughs> Who are you dating? Who are you dating? She, and, and about that time, she bounced up on the bus. I'm like, no, no way. And so he met her playing at her nephew's. Um, you got to totally take credit for that, man. You got to take credit as the one that got those two connected. Oh, heck yeah. Are you kidding? They're, you know, they're, Josh is, is like my brother and she's like my sister. Yeah. So, you know, I, I always say I don't drop, I, you know, I, I, we were lucky to know a lot of celebrity folks and a lot of good people, but. You know, I, I was tell Kristen, I said, you know, you're you're the one I drop and I don't pick it back up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about I've dropped her name. So. Right. Well, so listen, said, everybody, everybody has the drawers that you're just describing. We all have those parts of our life. Like it was really rough. I don't ever want to go through that again. So I kind of want to hide that from the rest of the world. And I asked you this question about um, writing the songs because your latest album, Jacob, you, you go into those drawers really boldly. And you pull it out and you show the world like, hey, I've gone through some hard struggles. I've gone through some really tough fights along the way. Yeah. And that's that's really not what superstar celebrities do. They kind of show the, the best side of their life, the best parts of their life. And honestly, the, the rest of the world looks back and says, they're so different than me that I can't relate to them. They can't relate to me. What you're showing your listeners, what you're showing your audience is, look, man, I'm a real dude with real struggles. Yeah, absolutely, man. I uh, I felt a responsibility. Well, let me start with this. Um, uh, I, I did four months of mental health care in Houston. And my first, I don't even, I, it wasn't rehab for me. It, was, you know, it, was, it wasn't that. It was, I'd done that, you know. Uh, this was this was this was day two of mental health. Yeah, um, work. Some inpatient care is what you were doing in Houston. Yeah, in in and out. Yeah, um, uh-huh. four months. I met my spiritual counselor there because a lot of my hangups were the spirituality things. Yeah, a lot of trauma there. And um, he sat down. We had a, some scrambled eggs and coffee, and he said, he said, um, you know the story, of Jacob. I said, look, man, you know, if you're going to, I know the, I know the Bible is that if you, if you yeah. were having that conversation, then, you know, drink your coffee. And, and, uh, that was kind of my attitude. He goes, no, 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 chill out, dude. He goes, just wanted to say, I know your story. He goes, you're, you know, God kind of crippled you, man. And, yeah. and uh, you know, and he, 
and you know, Jacob changed his name to Israel and, and he went out and God changed his name and he went out mm-hmm. and became a leader of the tribe. Many interpretations of the story, but and and I, and I looked at him because I at that point I had I'd retired. I was like, I'm not doing music anymore. You know, it, it became it was no joy in it for me anymore. It was more of a, a, a pain in my heart. Yeah. And um in a single moment, uh, a, just a, a feeling, um, a spiritual feeling just overwhelmed me. I said, Clint, you just, not only did you just name, did you just bring my desire back to sing, um, but you also just named my next record. Wow. And it was born like that. And I knew this yeah. story that I had to tell I was going to work out over the next four months. And um, it's songs like God with a Gun happened there. Yeah. Um, standing in the whiskey um, happened when my sponsor sent me uh, three wooden geese about uh-huh. this tall in the mail, and I opened it up, and they were beautifully carved. Um, they actually took them to my album release party, and they had on rain boots, a pink pair, a white pair, and a, a red pair. And I, I called them. I said, what in the world is this? The well, you just started, you know, searching and writing songs for your record. He goes, and, and geese are, are one of the highest, most beautiful flying birds. And so may your songs soar that high and, and be that wonderful. I said, cool. <clears throat> I said, why are they wearing rain boots? He goes, he goes, well, you dumb, dumb, in case you land in the whiskey. <laughs> and I fell out laughing. I said, standing in the whiskey yeah. when we wrote it that day. Yeah. And our third single off the record, because, um, uh, single number two is a song called Dents on a Chevy that, uh-huh. um, that I wrote with my uh, uh, good friend, Starner Jones, and um, who I met in Houston, Texas. Um, he was one of my counselors there. I didn't, sorry, I didn't write this. One of two songs on this album I didn't write. And uh, and Dr. Jones pitched me a song on a, yeah. my first in Houston. I said, dude, I think this is very unethical. I don't think yeah, that's be, right. Are you giving a side? Is this your high side hustle, right? But then I was like, it's a really good song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm using it. It stayed with me. And uh and it's I needed something fun because the content matter of this album is is strong. Um from songs uh, I mean there's 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 a, a song that, that the first line is that there's too many ghosts hiding in my closet. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't even close the door if I'm being honest. I mean and um I think this is the first album that I that, that I that I did that is so authentically me that I felt I felt seen by myself. Uh-huh. I felt I felt seen by everyone around me. I, 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 I felt heard, and that is so important as a human being. Yeah. And road you're traveling down, guys out there, if you're listening right now, um, find it in yourself to see yourself first yeah. and love yourself. Because I realized that I've never taken the opportunity to actually fall in love with myself. And that's not a bad thing. That's not right. being like, oh, I'm so cool and all. It's just loving your bones and your body and being appreciative of the gifts that you have. Yeah. And and getting those dots all connected. Um, you know, man, I, I couldn't spend I couldn't spend two minutes by myself. There was always people around, always just because it was the flight of the bumblebees. Always. Right. One of the greatest gifts I gave I was given and, and learned to do was um, was being at home and watching Netflix for two days by myself and just being fine, having a cup of tea. And people you know, are like, my, all right, I'm now you're talking my language time. And I'm so OCD too. And I kind of had to pull that back. My, uh, yeah. uh, my counselor said, okay, you don't get to make your bed for a week. <laughs> so, what, my, what if my mother comes over? Right. <laughs> so just learning, just getting into your humanness, man. And yeah. And so I did that on this record. I I was able to. There's only 17 writers on this record, and uh-huh. they were placed because every time I go to write a song, um, and these are my friends, like finding out God of the Gun, sitting down with Arlo Montenegro and Eric Halbig, and Jamie Floyd, and finding out that, that all of them had lost someone to suicide, including yeah. one of the brother, and and. And the song was written in two hours, sitting in the wow. floor where I almost uh, wasn't here. And because I wanted to reclaim that space in my house. Yeah. I wanted to reclaim 
um, life. Yeah. And and then we sat in there when the song was done. All four of us. If you haven't seen four, three grown three grown men and a, and a classy lady ball their eyes out and just yeah. have a moment of hallelujah, it was that. And yeah. because we knew we had something special. And let me tell you, I'll, I'll close that subject with this. Um, excuse me, I have a little bit of cold. Um, the first time I performed that song was just at a showcase downtown Nashville, just for a buyer's mm -hmm. bunch. And we allowed 50 fans to come. Yeah. And um, I walked off the stage and this dad walked over to me. He said, hey, <clears throat> um, my son almost wasn't here last month and so he's here he's a little shy he loves your music he said but the the the, the chamber got stuck yeah wow and we got him we got there in time to get him you know some counseling some help uh-huh but he won't talk about it he said if anybody asked him what happened he's just simply plays god or the gun for them and really? i i would have cried out i lost it man yeah. i was like what? And I ran over to the stairs and said, may I hug you, man? I said, and he said, absolutely. And so this kid named Ryan, um, I said, man, um, you know, I clearly wrote this song, not only for myself, but for you. And it didn't stop there. I, um, I, uh, that's the same night. I'm like, okay, thank you for these blood and bones here. Cause right. I, you know, yeah. um, I didn't cry for 18 years and I do a lot of it now. <laughs> all but, good, man. All good. Um, same night, um, these two ladies walked over to me. She goes, this is my mother-in-law. And um, she said, my husband, you know, um, ended his life uh, just yeah. a few months back. She said, and, and we don't get to say his name because there's just shame around it. She goes, wow. the, song, the song has given us an opportunity to say his name. Yeah. And I couldn't breathe. <laughs> man, I was like, wow. Wow. Man. wow. And. Um, for, for such a, um, a, a horrific moment in someone's life to have the real heroes are the people that are coming up and, and, yeah. and, and getting to tell their stories yeah. and, and, and saying people's names. So, um, folks, you know, if you, if you know something, something tragic happened to somebody, just don't be afraid to give them a hug and just in, yeah. and, 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 and say their name because they want you to, <laughs> you know, so, a uh, heavy yeah. subject, but a beautiful moment that was, was born with four individuals who needed to talk about it yeah well Todd, yeah. i've had some of the talent most talented people some of the toughest people on the planet have been on this podcast and almost every one of them described moments similar to you where they're in a really really bad way some of them considered the gun others of them um just barely made it through the big challenges these these moments in life that should have beat them but they they decided i'm going to be unbeatable and here's what's fascinating. I have almost all of the toughest, the most talented people that are on the planet that have been on this show. They've all reached out. They've all got some mental health help along the way because they realize yeah. I, I'm, I'm stuck right now. And if I don't get some help, I could make a really bad decision that's going to hurt everybody around me. Yes. And I'm proud of you for being so willing, so bold to be vulnerable with your music. And obviously that dad that wife, uh, your songs, because you look, if you just wrote feel good party music, it would have never m m touched them the way that your music touched them. Thank you, man. I appreciate you saying that. I, I am, uh, I am, uh, I almost can't say the words because I've said it, I've said it quite a few times this, since Christmas. I said, Oh my gosh, I used to whisper it. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let anybody know, but I think I might be happy. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when uh, you were at a point where it was either God or the gun, it's a, it's a really, really a beautiful day when you can wake up and say, I think I'm happy now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to feel it, to see it, to, 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 and to pay it forward. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just, just to have this, uh, um, 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 you know, the, the most awesome people show up <laughs> Yeah, when they do, when you get on the other side of something, uh, and they just, uh, um, and my sponsor said, Oh gosh, he goes, Herndon, they've been traveling your way a long time. You just finally open, unlock the damn door. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
Okay, well, let me talk about paying it forward for just a second. You mentioned a couple of times on this episode about the struggles and about getting sober, and you're helping people get sober. But I want to go back a little bit. Man, you were you were making number one hits. You were all over the radio, 90s and 2000s. Talk about how you ended up in addiction and how that addiction got control of your life. Because I really feel like there's some people right now that are struggling with addiction, but they they're keeping it to themselves. And they right. don't have the courage to actually reach out and to find help. So I want to give you a chance to talk to those people right now. Can you describe how this became a full-blown addiction for you and what it took for you to get out of it? Yeah. When you're living someone else's life. Yeah. when you're Because that's what bone, you think they expect of you, right? That's what it's going to take to get to the top. Yeah, when your blood and bones are, are not even present, when you're doing media blitzes and you're not telling the truth yeah yeah and you have you have um gone as far as marrying someone just to have a career and and i mean have a hollywood wife right um you're hurting people left and right because you're not being honest mostly yourself 90 percent yourself yeah um you get so lost and you're dealing with things that you don't understand. Um, the pedestal is a beautiful place when it's authentic. Otherwise, it is. It can be brutal. Yeah, and it can be around. brutal. <laughs> I heard a yeah. I heard a brilliant oh. musician refer to it as a beast. That fame that you sought for so long can become a beast that will just destroy you if you're not it careful. Will. It will. It'll painfully eat you up. Um, I, I also was very blessed. I mean, I've, I had a record label that stood by me through some really hard times, yeah. um, but still expected me to move out into the world and still be a straight man in country music. Uh -huh. um, and I played the role brilliantly and until I couldn't anymore. Um, I, you know, I think I started, I, I uh, was introduced to, um, to methamphetamines uh, when I was 19 years old in a situation um, that was sexually abusive. Uh -huh. And, um, and I was never able to talk about it. Um, I was told I couldn't be in this business anymore if I opened my mouth. And yeah. Basically, you know, I say sexually abused, but, but basically raped. And wow. Um, it's been able to say that word after so many years. Um, yeah. And men almost <laughs> never say that word, but there are plenty of men that have been where you are and yeah. need to be, need to find the courage to say it. Yeah. And we're going to focus on that on on uh, the next season of my podcast, which is something I'm really proud of. But you know, that was the first time I was on the 20th floor of the Hyatt Regency Sunset Boulevard and, and almost jumped. Uh -huh. Just wow. uh, the, the blueprints that were put in place. I say, you know, if you believe in God, you believe in the devil. If you believe in good, you believe in evil. There was some there was some evil energies that were mm -hmm. d that were onto me early on and placed on me and in me and. Um, and that just began uh, a, a, a slippery slope of quicksand that I could not get out of. Yeah. And, and then, you know, going on and, 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 uh, and continuing to the, the drugs for, I said this, the drugs were really not drugs to me. They were, they were more a medicine and th that would ease the pain of some really horrible things that, uh, some things I haven't even talked about yet because, you know, the strategically, yeah. um, you, the beast, you know, you don't necessarily unleash it, you know, right? All of but um, there has been um, years of blackout that I'm now just unfolding. Wow! And um, and, and I'm going to talk about it, every layer of it, because at this point in my life, if I can't talk about it, um, it'll kill me. So I am, and I'm willing to talk about it publicly because yeah. Um, Guess what? Um, that's the pedestal that God gave me. That 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 the world has given me an opportunity to have a foundation, a foundation for love and acceptance. Right. Um, that we go out and help LGBTQ families. We help people get sober. We help people get um, it detoxed. You know, a lot of people can't go to treatment yeah. for a month. They'll lose their jobs. Right. So, you know, then we give you a week of of, of what this uh, of some of some greatness. It just just plant a seed, and then give you the tools to go out and and, and find your way. And, um, for me, 
that's my job now. That's yeah. that's really what makes me. Um, the music is a huge plus because I do it well. Um, I, 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 I'm a singer and I'm a singer songwriter and that's a gift. So the gift is healthy. It's always been there, uh-huh. but the blood and bones have had to take a lot of work. They've taken on a lot of stuff and they're strong. So, um, my job is to pay it forward Yeah. and through, through conversations like this. Um, and I remember when this people magazine article came out, this was last or mid year and uh-huh. there was four pages magazine sitting on my dining room table and I, and I, um it was a great interview because it was the first time in my life i ever felt free i, did, I didn't uh-huh. go to the interview like i was gonna faint from fear um or be eaten by the beast i um i had nothing to hide and the podcast is probably one of the best interviews of my life because yeah. there was there were nothing held back i was finally able to tell the truth and um actually with a lot of joy and, but I looked at that magazine. I'm like, 30 years of my life in four pages. <laughs> I held it. We did that, right? <laughs> and uh, none of my friends understood it because they were like, because they didn't know the album that I had yeah. just done. They just, and I mean, that article came out. It was crickets around my house. I, I didn't really? even hear from my cousin. There was wow. like, what? What's going on? And a week later, the album came out, and it came out. I probably had 250 texts and calls are like, yeah. okay, now we get it. <laughs> yeah. All like, right. Why digging up old ghosts, man? <laughs> yeah. Well, you oh are gosh. paying it forward. Uh, and honestly, what you just described a moment ago sounds like thousands of warriors that I know that are, they saw something really traumatic. They, they had some really rough things happen to them in war and they are trying to make those things go away. And like you just described, they're turning to pills, they're turning to the bottle and they're using it to try to make the bad memories go away. Problem is bad memories don't go away. You learn, you need some, you may need some professional help to learn how to deal with them, but yeah. don't turn to the bottle. Don't stand in the whiskey trying to make the memories go away because right. it doesn't work. All it does it is doesn't. make you, all it does is make you broke and hung over the next day, but all of those <laughs> problems still show up with you the next day too. So I like that. that. That may have been a song, man. Broken. Up. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm, I cannot, t- I can name a thousand guys and gals that are using pills in the bottle right now, trying to make oh. something from combat go away and it's not going away. And I want to tell them how, mo- how much longer are you going to do this to yourself? Cause it's obviously not working. Why don't you turn to something that will work? Yeah. I can tell you after 18 years of being sober and during, you know, my, I, I call it my, my one day hiccup, my yeah. relapse. Um, it wasn't medicine anymore. It did not feel it just, it felt, um, it felt as broken as it could possibly. It yeah, felt like it, yeah. it felt like the truth about what it is. Right. Yeah. Um, um, and so it was, so I, that I stopped that immediately. And then my mental health took over from there. Right. And my mental health was really the relapse because yeah. it no longer could stand up to, um, lies. It no longer could stand up to yeah. eating. It was taken by the beast. It could no longer stand up to um, the world ending. It's what it felt right. like. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, I ended up on my balcony screaming the worst things at God. You know, who was listening? Everybody was locked inside. And <laughs> and I finally, my sponsor said, oh, when, when things were good, and, you know, we're on the other side of it, I was yeah. home and feeling joy. He goes, congratulations, buddy. He said, God just retired his popcorn machine. Yeah. About you from <laughs> There ain't nothing that interesting on her in the Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so we, 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 I think we have to get to those moments and hopefully yeah. we survive them to, to finally break free. And on your worst day, guys, no, on your worst day, you can make a phone call on your worst yeah. day. You, you can, you can make it. And even if it's just something as simple as going into the mirror and looking at yourself right in the eyeballs and go, I am fucking special. I am awesome. And I got to find my way back to that no matter what. And excuse my language, but sometimes that word works. (laughs) I am, I am incredible. I'm spectacular. And the number of times that I did that, even before I had the counseling or became a counselor, Uh just subconsciously just crawling 
to a space and going, I see you. I know you're in there. And we're going to get through this. Yeah. Because really, the only person that's going to really get you through it is your spirituality in you. Right. You've got it in you to get it through. To get through, gosh, I've seen people in a lot more shape than I ever was. And, and, and I've heard their stories and I've cried and prayed with them. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. And I've heard this over and over again. I had to look at myself in the mirror. Yeah. When you hear this, it's in, also in one of the songs, um, it's in God again. Um, the opportunity to look at yourself and, and scrape through the muck and the yeah. tar, the feathers and all the crap that's been put on you and to see you to see yourself is a gift. So uh, I guess it, if I were to say one counseling moment, don't be afraid to tell yourself the truth about where you are, but also don't be afraid to tell yourself the truth about where you can be. Right. And I think um, that is the, the greatest gift I've been given. Yeah. It really. It's just to, to know, to, to know Boyd Tyrone Herndon. Right. So, I yeah. hope the listeners that are driving right now with a mom that's got stuff going on and she's listening to this podcast in the background, I hope you come back to this for just a second because what Ty is saying is absolutely true. Man, you may be in a really, really bad place right now. And if you're going to get to the point where you can look in the mirror and not be disgusted of what you're looking at, you may have to crawl and scratch and go on your fingernails just to get to this moment. But don't give up. Don't stop. Don't give in because it's worth it to be able to finally get in the mirror, walk away from the gun, walk away from the pills to be able to st finally stand in the mirror and not be disgusted at what you're looking at. So I hope you're listening to Ty right now. Um, hey, man, with the little time that we have left, I want to give you a chance to talk about the podcast and the book, though, uh, because I want sure. people to connect with you some more. So describe uh, the podcast, what you've done with it. And if you got enough information, tell the audience about the book that you're about to drop. Um, well, my grandma, I was gonna say my grandma used to say she's really a great lady. She used to say you put a thousand hearts on the table and you don't see race, color, um, what you see or spirituality or, or, or religion, you, you see a thousand beautiful hearts that God made yeah. all just beautiful hearts. And that's what we try to talk about on the podcast. We, we, uh, we turn up the positive voices and talk about the negative voices so we can turn them down. All right. Um, and we, uh, we talk to some people that have been in the ditches and, um, um, it's been a gift to me. We, we, uh, we're actually taking the, uh, the podcast to uh it's going to be a talk show setting now it'll actually be filmed what look at you you're going to become the next ellen or kelly clarkson whoever you want to refer to here lots of music for sure um you know and on um you can if just just if you just type in ty herndon um uh, uh it's called soundboard ty herndon soundboard it you know it, it'll pop up but um uh those conversations also are teaching moments, not only yeah. for listeners, but for me. Of course. <laughs> I never walk away once that I'm like, oh my God, that was that lives in me now. Like um, I do every episode, like I am better <laughs> off from doing this episode. I don't know if anybody else is going to enjoy it, but I did. <laughs> we love our chats, right? <laughs> yeah. I know from the emails that you get, I'm sure that you, uh, you, you, you know, the truth that it helps a lot of people. So yeah. thank you for, for what you do as well, my friend. Thank you for that. Well, like you said, man, when you get a chance to see and hear from a thousand beautiful hearts, I just wrote that comment, that, that quote down, like that is a great quote. That quote is worth a song title one day. When you get a yeah, chance to hear from a thousand beautiful hearts, man, it is that, that just makes you better. How could you not be well, better off that way? They're out there, man. You know, um, um, my mom also does some great quotes. She goes, you know, you just had a, you just had a string of bad days. And they just happened to last for 30 years for you. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, there were some good days there were some good Christmases. Sure. There. Um, but you know, um, the, the, the rain does stop, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the bad waters, the good crop and then the good crop grows. So, yeah. um, and then the, the book is, uh, slated for late next year. Um, uh, 24. it's called God. Yeah, it's called God yeah. of the Gun. And okay. We uh, also um, just signed on to do a, 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 a pretty heavy documentary around it. And just, uh, um, you know, it's interesting because 
everything I've run from my entire life, uh, the battle scars are now front and center. Yeah. And yeah. I'm so proud of them. And yeah. I never, that it would feel that way. And, um, and universe, uh, energy, the promises, God have brought all these incredible characters into my life, uh, including a future husband. So, um, it's just, uh, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful day. And I tell you that i tell you this to the listeners out there that, um, from, from the tar and feather and from the quicksand, yeah. um, it can be a cocoon. And from that cocoon can, can bloom a beautiful, a beautiful, healthy butterfly. Yeah. And you're that butterfly. And, um, doesn't mean every day's easy because it's not, that'd be a lie, but starting out your day with something positive and then you know the challenges get easier and challenges are challenges only right. until uh until you lay the truth into it and then they're not a challenge anymore it's like okay is this serving me or is it not right. and knowing yourself is very important when it comes to to um to what we call roadblocks my sponsor gave me a great and i'll close with this gave me a great um quote about roadblocks he said a roadblock is if you're just moving forward he goes hey every new path started by going to the left or the right so the roadblock can stay in place just make sure you sign your uh, name on the (laughs) side of it go around (laughs) that is a great quote right every new path started because there was something blocking the old one and it forced you to go left or right yeah yeah and by the way when you take that right turn make sure you look for ty herndon's autograph on the board in front of you because he's already gone down that road a little bit in front of you yeah. <laughs> hey, Ty, I want to tell you, man, I am, I, I've am i lived most of the last 30 years inundated with veteran suicide. Guys got themselves in a bad way, couldn't find a way out of it. The only solution for them was a permanent solution. Put a pistol in my mouth and make it all go away. And it <clears throat> really, really encourages me to hear a guy like you who's so vulnerable, so um, honest, so authentic that you're willing to, to write a song and to even turn it into a book and to say, listen, you don't have to go down that road. It may be a long, hard road, but there are some better days uh, coming if you'll fight and get out of the, the, the rough hole that you're in. So thank you for being so humble. Thank you for being so vulnerable and so honest, man. Man, Thank you. I think you're one of those people that I wrote a song about you as well. It's, 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 it's all called Lean In, man. You'd get, the thing is about this, um, we could go on all day. I know we could. Yeah. Uh, you know, just you have this gift to open your mouth and talk. And if you see somebody that's being quiet and they're not talking, they're shut down. Right. You know, I, I have become a huge advocate for I knew one person on my street when I went into this COVID thing. Uh-huh. And today I, pro- I probably know 200 people on my street. Yeah. So much so see me coming like we're fine Herndon (laughs) they're like here he comes again (laughs) open your mouth and check on your neighbors for sure right yeah definitely makes the world a better place hey man I cannot tell you how much it means to me that you'd be on this episode and and I'll uh I'll uh, point everybody at the end of the episode in the notes to um the soundboard by with Ty Hurd and um your podcast thanks man be well, man. Be blessed and uh, keep doing the keep doing the good work. <laughs> and you too. Hey, I hope you were really focused when Ty was describing some of those rough moments of his life where he was in the pills and in the bottle and really struggling. And maybe you're struggling right now. Would you do what Ty did? Would you reach out and find some help? Make a phone call. Reach out to a professional. Maybe you were in one of those places a while back. And now you're on the other side of it. Would you do what Ty did? Would you start to pay it forward for someone else? I hope you were encouraged to hear this very successful musician talk about getting real with himself, getting real with who he looks at in the mirror, and getting real with his audience. And I just need to tell you, thanks for being part of the Unbeatable audience. I believe these are the greatest listeners on the planet And I want to invite you to join the Unbeatable Army. It's a connection point where people are connected with one another. I'm sending out regular information. There's content that we're sharing all week long. And if you want to be part of the Unbeatable Army, all you got to do to sign up, all you have to do to enlist in the Unbeatable Army is just simply go to unbeatablearmy.com. 
Hey, if you've been listening to us for a while, why don't you go ahead and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform? And if you haven't done it already, why don't you go ahead and follow us on social media also? You can find us pretty much everywhere. Just go to at unbeatablepodcast.com. Thanks for joining me for this incredible episode with Ty Hervin on Unbeatable. See you next time.